the impression that the sequence which we have been talking in the previous class as tata box is not just there to invite RNA polymerase and general transcription factor to the promoter and then just help in transcription. But the core promoter elements consist of not only tata box, but many other sequences. And these core promoter elements not only help the RNA polymerase to initiate transcription, but there is lot of diversity in the core promoter elements itself and this diversity itself can contribute to differential gene regulation. So, the purpose of this talk is going to make you understand that the sequences like Tata box and many other core promoter elements, their job is not only to just initiate transcription, but also to bring in diversity or contribute to differential gene expression in eukaryote. That is going to be the crux of today's talk. So, let us now, let us now just recapitulate what we discussed in the previous class in case you had no time to look at the previous lectures. The summary of what we discussed in the previous lecture is that in eukaryotes, there are about three RNA polymerases, which we call as 1, 2 and 3. This is unlike what happens in prokaryotes, where there is only one RNA polymerase, which transcribes tRNA, rRNA as well as mRNA. Whereas, in the case of eukaryotes, the RNA polymerase has evolved into three different RNA polymerases. RNA polymerase 1 takes care of ribosomal RNA transcription, RNA polymerase 2 takes care of transcription of protein coding genes and RNA polymerase 3 takes care of tRNA, 5S RNA and other RNA genes. And we also discussed in the previous class that eukaryotic RNA polymerase actually is a multi subunit complex. Unlike prokaryotic subunits, where are only four subunits, the eukaryotic RNA polymerase has number of more, num, lot more subunits. And unlike the prokaryotic RNA polymerase sigma subunits, which actually can recognize the Pribno box that is the minus 10 box and the minus 35 sequence, none of the eukaryotic RNA polymerase 2 subunits are involved in promoter recognition and DNA winding. This is another important point we discussed last time that unlike the sigma subunit of RNA polymerase in bacteria, the eukaryotic RNA polymerase subunits, none of the subunits can actually recognize the promoter. So, the eukaryotic RNA polymerase is kind of a blind. It does not know where the promoter is. In fact, if you want to do a cell-free transcription in a test tube, if you want to do transcription and if you put the DNA template containing promoter in the coding region and if you also put all the nucleotides and if you just put, put purified RNA poly, eukaryotic RNA polymerase, it just goes and randomly binds everywhere and initiate transcription very randomly, which is very, very deleterious to the cell because RNA polymerase every time has to bind in a specific place and initiate transcription from a specific point, then only we will get the same kind of mRNA every time the gene is transcribed. So, it is very, very important to understand that the general transcription factors that is the TF2A to TF2H play this key role of bringing RNA polymerase to the exact site in the promoter. So, that the RNA polymerase transcription initiates transcription exactly from the same point every time. <coughs> And the RNA polymerase to cannot recognize the target promoter directly and it relies on a host of general transcription factors to perform this function. This is what we uh, discussed in detail in the last class. Now, I forgot to mention in the last class that in addition to the three RNA polymerases, there is also a very new RNA polymerase which was discovered in plants and this is actually called as RNA polymerase 4. In fact, this was, was discovered just in 2005 and as you can see here, three papers were published more or less simultaneously in Science, Nature and Cell about the discovery of this RNA polymerase and which has now been called as RNA polymerase 4. So, in addition to this, the three RNA eukary eukaryotic RNA polymerases 1, 2 and 3, a fourth RNA polymerase was recently identified in plants and this RNA polymerase actually facilitates the production of small interfering RNA. Now, at this point, I do not want to digress into explaining to you what is siRNA and so on and so forth. We will discuss this much later in this course. Just remember, this RNA polymerase 4 which was newly discovered in plants, it actually is involved in the transcription of production of siRNA and this siRNA is actually involved in RNA directed DNA methylation, transcription silishing and formation of heterochromatin. Now, at this point, I do not want to explain all these terminologies now. We will discuss all these things when we actually come to the role of chromatin in regulation of gene expression and we talk about histones and so on and so forth. At that time, we will explain in detail, but just remember at this time point that a novel RNA polymerase referred to as RNA polymerase 4 has been discovered in plants. So, in addition to the polymerase 1, 2 and 3, which most of you have studied in textbooks, here now we have a novel RNA polymerase which is called RNA polymerase 4. It is also important to remember this RNA polymerase 4 is not essential. That means, if you delete this RNA polymerase coding gene, it is not that the plants will die. 
the plant will still continue to survive. So, it is called as a non essential gene, and uh, but it does expect exhibit many unique properties which the other nuclear RNA polymerases does not exhibit. Now, we will not go into too many details about the RNA polymerase structure and function, so on and so forth. Just remember at this point that a new RNA polymerase called RNA polymerase 4 has been discovered in plants and it seems to be involved in the production of SIRNA, which is involved in gene silencing. We will discuss this later at the in the course. Now, I also discussed in the last class that the RNA polymerase 2 is associated with gene, six general transcription factors like I mentioned TF2A to TF2H and uh, TF in all this case terminology is transfer transcription factor and 2 transfer transcription factor 2 that is the protein coding genes or the RNA polymerase 2. Now, purification and biochemical characterization of all the general transcription factors as well as analysis of their function in cell-free transcription assay systems indicated that RNA polymerase 2 and general transcription factors are assembled in a sequential manner. Now, this also we discuss in detail wherein I actually told you that first a complex called a DAB complex involved 2 a TF 2 D, TF 2 A and TF 2 B is first assembled and this is the one that actually recognizes the Tata sequence in the promoter region and the DAB complex is first formed and once the DAB complex is formed the RNA polymerase 2 in com conjunction with TF 2 F is recruited to this pre initiation complex and the TF 2 F actually prevents RNA polymerase from binding non specifically to DNA. So, the specificity of RNA polymerase to promote is actually brought out by general transcription factors. And finally, the TF2E and TF2H join the leading uh, uh, join the initiation complex resulting in DNA unwinding, promoter clearance and RNA synthesis begins in the presence of nucleotides and the signal for the initiation of transcription is the phosphorylation of the C terminal domain of RNA polymerase 2 by TF2H. So, the crux of what I told yesterday is that the function of sigma factor in prokaryotes namely the promoter recognition and DNA winding is uh, unwinding is actually carried out by general transcription factors in eukaryotes. Now, in this class what I would like to emphasize is that so far we thought the core promoter means only the Tata box. Now, I do not want to give you the impression that it is the only the Tata box that is actually involved in the initiation of transcription and this is the only element that is considered the core promoter element. Now, the crux of today's class is to tell you that all protein coding genes need not necessarily contain the same promoter core promoter sequences. There is a lot of variation in this core promoter sequences and Tata box is actually present only in a subset of protein coding genes in eukaryotes. There are many other core promoter sequences which are involved in transcriptionization and this diversity in core promoter sequence itself can contribute to differential gene regulation. This is what is going to be crux of, crux of today's talk. So, just as variants of minus 35 and minus 10 promoter sequences can contribute to differential gene regulation prokaryotes by which you have binding to different sigma factors, variations in core promoter sequences and general transcription factors binding to it can also contribute to differential gene regulation in eukaryotes. So, this is what is going to be the crux of today's talk. So, eukaryotic core promoter sequences and proteins binding to it are not monolithic that means there is not just one type of core promoter sequence and uh, proteins binding to it there is a lot of variation in that and in fact they are highly invariant and they need not be conserved in all promoters of an organism. So, there is not just one single Tata box, one single TF2D and so on and so forth. There is a lot of variations in this and this class and then the next class I am going to discuss about the diversity in this core promoter elements as well as diversity in the general transcription factors and how this diversity itself can contribute to differential gene regulation. So, the bottom line I want to say is that there are no universal core promoter elements in an organism which, which means it is not that Tata box is the only core promoter element which is present in all the protein coding genes. There is lot of variation there is nothing like a universal core promoter element which is promoted in, present in all the eukaryotic promoters that is what is the take home message. Now, let us now try to understand what exactly we mean by a core promoter. Now, core promoter can be defined as the minimal stretch of a contiguous DNA sequence that is sufficient to direct accurate initiation of transcription by RNA polymerase 2 and its associated factors. This is the simplest definition one can think about a core promoter and usually the core promoter covers a promoter region about 35 base pairs upstream or 35 base pairs downstream of the transcription start site. Now, we all know the transcription start site is designated as plus 1 and about we are now going to discuss today about the promoter elements which is about 35 base pairs either upstream or 35 base pairs downstream of this transcription start site and this is what constitutes a core promoter sequence. Now, let us try to understand what is happening in around the core promoter sequence, what are the variations in this core promoter sequences. Now, <coughs> We remember today all the today's class we are going to discuss solely about core promoter sequences does not mean there are no no other cis acting elements. So, roughly 
the protein coding gene of an eukaryote, there are number of other regulatory elements which are also contribute to differential gene regulation. For example, there is something called a proximal promoter which encompasses about minus 250 to plus 250 nucleotides from the transcription start site. Now, today we are going to talk about sequences only about plus 30 to minus 30 of the inner the transcription start site. But if you go further beyond either upstream or downstream, these are actually referred to as the proximal promoter sequences and there are protein factors which bind to these sequences and they also contribute to differential gene regulation. We will talk about this at a, next, at a later stages. There are also what are called as enhancers, silencers, boundary or insulatory elements and all these elements usually are present several thylobases upstream from the transcription start site and they actually serve as binding sites for several transcription factors. So, it is the combined action of all these promoter elements and all these protein factors that ultimately contribute to differential regulation in eukaryotes. But today we are going to focus only about the core promoter sequences which is present about 30 to 40 base pairs upstream and downstream of the transcription initiation site. <coughs> now, as I mentioned earlier, the, in the first class I, I kept on talking only about Tata box. Now, what I am going to tell today is that Tata box is the only is not the only core promoter sequence which is present in the uh, eukaryotic promoter. There are several variants and some of these rather well characterized core promoter sequences are shown in this particular cartoon. For example, there is something called FABRE, this is actually called as TF2B response element. There is what is there are two variants called BREU, BRUD, U refers to upstream and D refers to downstream. We will discuss what exactly all these things a little bit later. There is of course, what is called as an initiator motif, which is again a very important core promoter element. There is again something called an MTE, DPE, XCPE, DCE and so on and so forth. So, what this cartoon is, what I want to emphasize from this cartoon is that Tata box is not the only core promoter sequence of a protein coding gene. There are many other core promoter elements which have been discovered and these sequences are also present in a number of eukaryotic promoters and Tata box is not, need not be present all the time in all the protein coding genes. Now, what has also been demonstrated is that Tata box is not the only sequence to which this TF2D actually binds. Now, as you know, TF2D is nothing but the Tata binding protein and a bunch of protein called TAFs. No TBP associated factors and I told you in the last class it is the TF2D which is actually involved in the promoter recognition and the TBP component of TF2D actually recognizes the Tata box and the DAB complex is therefore formed in the Tata box. But the TF2D not only recognizes the Tata box, it also recognizes several other core promoter elements like initiator, MTE, DPE, DCE and so on and so forth. So, already you can see there is a diversity here. So, remember Tata box is not the only core promoter element recognized by the Tata by the TF2D transcription factor, general transcription factor. TF2D can also recognize a number of other core promoter sequences such as initiator, MTE, DPE and DCE and so on and so forth. Okay. Similarly, in the last class I told you the only component of the general transcription machinery which can bind DNA is the TF2D that is TBP and associate factors. But now I later studies have actually shown even the TF2B component of the general transcription factors can recognize DNA and in fact, the sequences which are recognized by TF2B is actually called as TF2B recognition element or BRE. So, you can see already we are deviating from some of the basic findings that we discussed in the last class that as we start analyzing more and more genes in eukaryotes and more and more organisms, you can see there are many exceptions to this general rule that we discussed in the last class and as we discuss some of these examples, it becomes very clear diversity in this core promoter sequences itself can contribute to differential gene regulation in eukaryotes. So, each of these core promoter elements is present in only a subset of core promoters while some promoters lack all known core promoter elements. This is very important for it to know. All these promo core promoter elements I have discussed here, they may be present in one or the other gene. For example, some promoters may contain Tata box. There are also what are known as Tata less promoters. They do not contain Tata box. So, instead of Tata box, they actually contain what is called as an initiator. So, the function of Tata box in these promoters is actually taken over by the initiator sequence. Right. Like similarly, some contain MTE, DPE, DCE and so on and so forth. So, and, and what has also been shown is that there are many promoters which do not contain any of these core promoter elements, suggesting that there may be still unknown core promoter elements which are yet to be discovered. So, we are still not completed the story, the story is ongoing as and when we analyze more and more genes, maybe more novel core promoter elements will be discovered, but so far at least this many number of core promoter elements have been discovered.
Now, let us go one by one and then see what is known about each one of these core promoter elements. Now, the first and the foremost uh, uh, core promoter element which was identified is the Tata box. So, Tata box was the first eukaryotic core promoter element which was identified uh, in 1979. Actually, it is a PhD thesis of um, uh, a person called Michael Goldberg at Stanford University. So, he actually identified that eukaryotic protein decoding genes actually contain a sequence called Tata box, which is actually recognized by the uh, basal transcription machinery and is essential for transcription initiation. Now, by analyzing a number of eukaryotic promoters, a consensus sequence was drawn for the Tata box, and this consensus sequence is TATA WAAR. No, what w, w is actually an IUPAC code for nucleotides and I will tell you what exactly W is in my uh, next couple of slides. <coughs> now, the Tata box is typically located about 25 to 30 nucleotides upstream of the transcription start site. As I told you, core promoter elements usually are present about 30 to 40 base pairs either upstream or downstream of the transcription start site and in many of the eukaryotic promoters, this Tata sequence is actually present about 25 to 30 nucleotides upstream of the transcription start site which is usually designated as plus 1. Okay. So, the first nucleotide of the Tata sequence that is what I underlined here, the T is usually present at minus 31 or minus 30 of the promoter region. So, if you want, if you for example, if you, if you now just draw um, a eukaryotic promoter, for example, if this is the transcription start site, which we call as plus 1, the Tata sequence is usually present about minus 30 to minus 31 and this is where the Tata box is present. Okay? <coughs> so, this is what uh, we need to understand. <coughs> Right. So, the Tata box, remember we, we also in the first class discussed about there is something called as a Pribno box or minus 10 region and minus 35 region and it is these sequences which are recognized by the uh, sigma factor of the uh, prokaryotic RNA polymerase. So, the Tata box is kind of resembles the minus 10 region of the Pribno box, but <coughs> people have clearly shown that it does not mean that the Tata box is actually a homologue of the Pigno box. It is just a coincidence that the Tata box more or less functionally at least resembles the Pigno box of the but uh, eukaryotes. <coughs> now, the consensus sequence for the Tata box is as I said TA, TAAA, but several variants of this sequence can function as the Tata box in vivo and those with one or two mismatches from the consensus sequence can still function as the Tata box. So, although this is a consensus sequence, there are many variations as I said, as you start studying more and more of the transcription of, of the protein coding genes, you soon realize that you start seeing variations of the general rule. Now, the Tata boxes are not present in all the promoters transcribed by RNA polymerase 2. Now, most of you who have uh, studied some basic textbooks in uh, eukaryotic gene expression, you probably think the moment you ask about how transcription is initiated in the eukaryotes, you will say Tata box. Now, Tata box is the place where the pre initiation complex is assembled and that is where the transcription initiation takes place. But remember, Tata box is not the only code promoter element and there are many promoters which actually lack Tata box. In fact, it was estimated that approximately 43 percent of about 200 or code promoter sequence analyzed in Dr. Drosophila contain a Tata box. So, another 60 percent do not contain. Okay. 32 percent of the about 1000 pro potential promoter regions contain a putative Tata box motif. So, there are many promoter sequences which do not contain a functional Tata box. Now, what is the function of Tata box? During transcription initiation, Tata box actually serves as the binding site for general transcription factor Tata binding protein, which is a component of the multi subunit complex TF2D, which we have discussed in detail in the last, last class. <coughs> Now, the next important core promoter element which was discovered of Tata box is what is called as an initiator motif. Again, this motif called as initiator was first identified by Smalab and Baltimore in 1989 in the promoter of a lymphocyte specific terminal deoxynucleotide transferase gene which actually does not contain a Tata box. So, they asked the question if this promoter does not contain a Tata box, how is that RNA polymerase 2 uh, is recognized? How does the RNA polymerase 2 recognize this promoter? How does the general transcription factor go and bind? And they soon identified there is actually something called an initiator motif in and around which the pre initiation complex is actually formed. Therefore, in Tata less promoters, the initiator motif actually serves the function of a Tata box for promoter recognition. So, initiator is nothing but a 17 base pair sequence that is sufficient for accurate basal transcription of both 
in vitro and in vivo and it actually encompasses the transcription start site. Now, unlike the Tata box which is usually present around minus 30 or minus 31 from the transcription start site, the initiator motif seems to be present in and around the transcription start site. This is the basic difference between the initiator and the Tata motif. Now, the discovery of the initiator actually explained how transcription can be initiated from promoters of protein coding genes which actually lack a Tata box. So, once people started realizing that Tata box need not be present in all the promoters, people started examining how these Tata less promoters are transcribed and as a consequence of this research, at least one code promoter motif called initiator was identified in 1989 by Baltimore's group. Now, if you look at the again by analyzing a number of Tata less promoters in a wide variety of eukaryotes like flies, humans and so on and so forth, people have identified what is called as a consensus sequence for initiator motif. In humans, the consensus sequence is YYANWYY. I would like to mention here, there is something you probably when we talk about nucleotides, you are only aware of A, T, G and C in the case of DNA and U, uracil in the case of RNA. But IUPAC that is International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry have actually come up with a number of nucleotide codes. For example, suppose I want to say that this particular sequence contains either A or G. That means it contains purines, then I use the verb letter R to designate that R means it can be either A or G. Similarly, Y means it can be it is pyrimidine that is it can be either C or T. Similarly, W means it can be either A or T. So, the IUPAC has come up with a number of nucleotide codes, single letter codes to designate a combination of nucleotides. Therefore, when I say W, W actually means this region may contain either A or T. Similarly, Y means it can be either C or T and so on and so forth. So, I have given the actual IUPAC code here for various nucleotides. So, in this consensus sequence, this underlined A actually serves as the transcription start site. So, the initiator motif actually encompasses the transcription start site in many of the Tata less promoters. Computation and analysis of several mammalian transcription start sites reveal that the mammalian initiator consensus is YR in which R corresponds to the first, uh, trans first nucleotide or the plus one of the transcription start site. So, again R means it is a purine, it can be either A or G. <coughs> now, initiator binds to a number of proteins of which TF2D binding is the most important. So, remember the TF2D component of the general transcription factor can not only bind a Tata box, but it can also bind to an initiator motif in Tata less promoters. <coughs> now, the second important cis acting element or the core promoter element which was discovered in addition to Tata box initiator is what is called as a BRE, which actually stands for TF2B recognition element. BRE, TF2B recognition element. <coughs> Now, the BRE was originally identified by Lagrange et al. in the year 1998 <coughs> uh, and this was actually found uh, identified as a TF2B binding element that is the sequence to which the TF2B transcription factor goes and binds and the BRE may be present either upstream when it is present upstream it is called BREU or it may be present downstream of the Tata box when it is called as BRED. So, there are two variants when the BRE is present upstream of the Tata box is called BREU, when it is present downstream of Tata box is called as BRED. Now, depending upon the promoter context, the BREs can have either positive or negative effect of the on the transcription. So, remember that this is where I kept talking about. So, do not assume that when I say core promoter sequences, their job is just to recruit RNA polymerase to the uh, promoter. Variations in the core promoter sequence itself can lead to differential gene regulation. That's the, that's the crux of the thing. So, depending upon what kind of other promoter sequences there, these BRE sequences can either activate transcription or they can actually repress transcription de depending upon what kind of promoter you are talking about. The BRE is actually present more frequently in promoters which do not contain a Tata box than those promoters which contain a Tata box. For example, 28.1 percent of Tata less promoters contain BREU compared to 11.8 percent of Tata containing promoters which have a BREU. So, usually those promoters which do not contain a Tata box seem to contain other core promoter sequences like initiator, BRE and so on and so forth. So, you can already see the diversity in the core promoter elements. Some eukaryotic promoters contain the uh, uh, typical Tata box, whereas in some cases the Tata box function is replaced by initiator. In some more in certain other promoters, neither you have initiator nor you have the Tata box, but you may actually have something called as a BRE. <coughs> 
Now, the other uh, core promoter element which was discovered uh, was what is called as a DPE which actually stands for downstream core promoter element because this is actually present downstream of the transcription start site. Now, the initiator is actually present on the transcription start site. So, plus 1 is somewhere here. So, the DPE is actually present downstream of the transcription start site. Therefore, it is called as downstream core promoter element or DPE. Now, the DPE was again first identified as a downstream TF2D recognition sequence that has a role in basal transcription activity by Burke and Kadunaga in 1996. Now, again you see this, this is an important observation. Do not assume that the TF2D or the TBP always need to bind to a region upstream of the transcription start site. Okay. It can bind right near the transcription start site that is in the case of the initiator. The TFT can, TFT can also bind to core promoter elements which are kind of situated little bit downstream of the transcription start site. So, you can already see there are a lot of variations. Now, in the Drosophila, the DPE consensus sequence is R, G, W, Y, V, T and again I have explained here what actually each one of these uh, new letters mean as per the IUPSC code. <coughs> Now, the DPE functions cooperatively with the initiator and the spacing between the initiator and DPE is very, very important for optimal transcription. So, you can see the exact position of the DPE downstream of the transcription uh, start site that is this distance between initiator and DPE is highly conserved and this distance is very, very important for the functional role of distal promote downstream core promoter element in many of the eukaryotic promoters. Now, other important core promoter element which has been discovered is known as the MTE or motif 10 element. <coughs> okay. Again, this was first discovered in Drosophila and this MTE is actually present from plus 18 to plus 27 relative to the transcription star side. So, remember again the two elements that we are discussing so far that is the DP and the MTE they are actually present downstream to the transcription start site whereas all other elements are discovered so far are either present in and around the transcription start site or upstream of the transcription start site. Two of the core promoter sequences DPE and MTE they are actually present downstream to the transcription start site and in the case of the MTE which is the motif 10 element first identified in Drosophila is actually present are somewhere between plus 18 to plus 27 relative to the transcription start site. <coughs> So, the consensus sequence for MTE is again is shown here where S is means it can be either G or C and R is actually a purine it can be either A or G as per the IUPAC nucleotide codes. <coughs> now, as observed in the case of DPE the MTE also functions cooperatively with initiator and again the spacing between initiator and MTE is crucial for its function. So, remember both in the case of the distal uh, co uh, core promoter elements that means distal to the transcription start site the spacing between initiator and MTE that is this region in the case of MTE and similarly in the case of DPE this spacing between initiator and DPE the spacing is very very important for their function that means this had to be positioned exactly at a specific distance from the transcription start site. Now, this is very, very important. Now, many a times we keep asking what is the significance of understanding all this jargon, why should we try to understand all these core promoter elements and so on and so forth. In fact, the lecture title is eukaryotic gene expression basics and benefits. Now, as we discuss some of these basic aspects, you may actually find many of these things boring, but you as and when I am going to give you examples of how some of these understanding some of these core promoter elements has actually led to some of the application. For example, I give one example here. Now, the MTE which is the motif 10 element synergistically activates transcription together with Tata and, and DPE motifs. Okay. So, when you have Tata box alone or Tata plus DPE motif you get a certain level of transcription, but if you have meet MTE in addition to these two elements you get much higher levels of transcription suggesting that the MTE synergistically activates transcription in conjunction with Tata and DPE motifs. Based on this basic observation is something called as a super core promoter. SCP was actually constructed. Now, this is kind of a synthetic promoter which contains the best Tata box sequence that is the most optimal Tata box sequence to which TF2D binds very efficiently, the best initiator motif based on analysis of various number of Drosophila promoters and the best MTE and DPE was designated by these people in 2006 and therefore, they were able to kind of designate uh, construct a new eukaryotic promoter which is one of the strongest known core promoters which exhibits very high affinity for binding to TF2D. So, by actually understanding how these core promoter elements actually function and how each these core promoter elements interact with each other, it is actually dis possible to discover or construct novel promoter sequences to which the TF2D can bind very efficiently and such promoters can actually be used for recombinant protein production in 
uh, using mini expression system. So, you can see already some kind of applications came out of many of these identification of this core promoter element. So, there have been benefits arising out of some of this basic research. Now, the other important down uh, pro core promoter element which was identified in some of the promoters is what is called as DCE namely the downstream core element. Now, the downstream core element was first identified in the human beta globin promoter by Louis et al in the year 2000 and subsequently in the adenovirus major late promoter and the, this DC actually consists of three other sub elements called S1, S2 and S3. The sequence is given here and they are actually present at different regions in the from the transcription start site. So, what I told you so far is that there are at least three downstream core promoter elements DCE, MTE and the uh, 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 DPE, MTE, DPE and DCE, these are all the uh, core promoter elements which are actually present downstream of the transcription start site. Now, the other important core promoter element which has been identified in some of the promoters is what is called as XCPE1 which stands for X core promoter element and XC, XCPE1 was actually present from minus A to plus 2 related to the transcription start site and actually functions as a positive cis acting element in presence of certain sequence specific transcription factors that bind to far upstream sequences in the promoter. Now, as I told you, although we are studying only the core promoter sequences which are present between minus 30 plus uh, upstream or minus 30 downstream of the transcription site, do not think that these core promoter sequences function in isolation. Now, this core promoter sequence is almost like a cricket pitch with that is where the action is. Now, but there are also what is called as an outfield, then you have a stadium, then you have people. So, all these things in, and in conjunction together collectively actually adds to the uh, merry of the game, right. Then only the cricket becomes lively. The same way what we are now talking about eukaryotic gene expression or the eukaryotic promoter sequences is only about the cricket pitch that is the core promoter sequence where the general transcription factors come and assemble. But then you also have the outfield which consists of proximal promoter sequences, distal promoter sequences, enhancers, silencers and so on which again uh, act in conjunction with the uh, core promoter sequences and then you have various other protein factors which actually interact with all these promoter sequences and it is the collective action of all these things that ultimately results in regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes and this XCPE1 is one such core promoter element which actually plays a very important role in certain promoters because it acts in conjunction with some of the protein factors which actually bound to many upstream regions of the uh, uh, these promoter sequences. Now, about 1 percent of the human pro promoters contain this XCP1 motif and this again is all present in the Tata Labs promoters. So, as you can see, although the Tata box was the original core promoter element which was identified, as people started analyzing more and more eukaryotic promoters, it became very clear that this is not the only sequence which is present and as people started identifying many promoters which do not contain the Tata box, they started identifying other core promoter sequences, many of which I now discussed here. The consensus sequence for XCP even is shown here. Again, I have mentioned what each one of these letters stand as per the IUPSC code. <coughs> so, the summary of what I am going to tell you today is what is this? There are a number of variants of the core promoter elements. So, do not think Tata box is the only core promoter element which is present in all eukaryotes. Tata box is actually present only in about 10 to 16 percent of the vertebrate promoters and about 33 to 40 percent of the promoters of flies like Drosophila. So, there are many promoters which do not contain a Tata box. Similarly, if you look at the initiator motif which is also a core promoter element, it is present about 55 percent of the vertebrate promoters and about 69 percent of the fly promoters. The BRE is present in about 12 to 62 percent of the vertebrate promoters whereas, the DPE that is the distal promoter element is actually present in about uh, 48 percent of the vertebrate promoters and 40 percent of the fly promoters. The MTE is actually present in the 8.5 percent of the dress of law promoters. Okay. So, the crux of what I have told you here is that there is a diversity among core promoter elements and although Tata box was the first core promoter element identified, subsequent studies indicated that the remaining promoters which do not contain a Tata box and in such cases many other core promoter elements actually function as either TF2D binding elements or TF2B binding elements and they also play a very important role in the general transcription factor. It is just like a cricket pitch. Now, when you say cricket pitch, it is not just all cricket pitches behave the same way. There are some pitches which are flat, some pitches which are bouncy, some pitches which are spin bowlers, some is very good for batsmen. The same way, although the core promoter elements is the basic job is to assemble RNA polymerase 2, 
uh, uh, for initiation of transcription, there are many variations of the code promoters elements. Some of them contain Tata boxes, some of them contain BREs, DPEs, MTEs and so on and so forth. And this variation in the pitch just like in cricket can contribute to the lively uh, game, uh, becomes game becomes more lively because it, the result becomes unpredictable. The same way variations in the code promoters also add to differential gene regulation. Now, let us now spend some time to understand how actually this diversity in the core promoter sequences actually contributes to differential gene regulation. <coughs> now, the core promoter is the ultimate target of the action of the sequence specific transcription factors that bind to specific upstream elements and many such transcription factors function only in conjunction with specific core promoter elements. Okay? This is very important. Okay? The, as I said, just as the action in a cricket field is concentrated on the cricket pitch, it is the core promoter sequences is the place where the action actually takes place because this is the place where the RNA polymerase has to bind and initiate transcription. But many other protein factors like upstream activated proteins, proximal promoter sequences, distal promoter sequences, enhancer binding proteins, repressors, they all have to ultimately, their job is to modulate RNA polymerase assembly in the pre initiation complex. So, this core promoter sequence has a very important role. So, the core promoters are not only involved in proper position on the RNA polymerase 2 transcription machinery, but they also function as important cis acting regulatory elements thereby providing another level of transcription regulation. Now, the reason I am spending this much time to emphasize the importance of core promoter elements is that most of you would have studied in textbooks that the only job of this minus 10 or minus 30 in the case of prokaryotes and the Tata box in the case of eukaryotes is to serve as a recognition site for RNA polymerase and general transmitter to come and bind. Now, already told in my first class, this minus 10 and minus 30 sequences in prokaryotes by variations can also lead to what is called a sigma factor switching and variations in the minus 10 and minus 30 sequence can actually lead to differential gene regulation. That is what I told you in the last class. In the same way, variations in the core promoter sequences and variations in general transcription factors binding to it can also contribute to differential gene regulation. Therefore, the function of the core promoter element is not just to serve as a uh, uh, pitch for bowling. There are variations in the pitch which can actually sometimes as a spin bowler, sometimes as a fast bowlers, sometimes as batsman in similar way. There are number of variations in these cis acting regulatory elements of the core promoter elements which actually contributes to differential gene regulation. In fact, this is very important. Certain enhancer sequences are functionally coupled to specific core promoter sequence. You can see how important a core promoter sequence. There, for example, there are many, many DNA sequences which are actually present further upstream in the promoter region, and many of these further upstream elements actually can function only when a specific core promoter sequence is present. For example, some of these upstream sequences can present only when a Tata box is present downstream. If you replace the Tata box with the initiator, this upstream sequence can no longer function as a enhancer, or it can no longer function as an activation sequence. So, there is a link between the core promoter sequence and the sequences which are further upstream. <coughs> so, certain transcription factors which bind to enhancer sequences can activate transcription only when the promoter contains specific core promoter sequence. That is what I just mentioned. you. For example, a transcription factor called SP1 which actually finds to further upstream sequences which we are going to discuss much later called the distal promoter sequence or proximal promoter sequences. This SP1 can actually bind to those sequence and function as a transcription actuator only from a Tata containing promoter, but if you replace the Tata box with a DPE, it SP1 can no longer activate transcription. So, whether SP1 can activate transcription or not from a distal promoter element depends on whether the Tata box is the core promoter sequence or not. When Tata box is not present, SP1 cannot activate transcription although it binds to the upstream action sequence. So, the core promoter sequence actually modulate the function of protein factors and cis acting elements present further upstream. So, which is very very important. So, I am going to give you some example to tell you how actually these core promoter elements can actually contribute to if differential gene regulation. For example, differential usage of two Tata sequences in the His3 gene promoter of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Now, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the Baker cyst and initially a number of studies have been carried out to understand basic aspects of eukaryotic gene regulation using simple eukaryotes like Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Drosophila and so on and so forth because they are much easy to grow and manipulate compared to complex uh, uh, eukaryotes like mouse, man and so on and so forth. Now, in the case of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, very interestingly, there is a uh, gene called His3 gene which is actually involved in the biosynthesis of His3. No. Now, as you know, yeast cells, if you grow the yeast cells in a rich medium, 
where which contains all the amino acids like what we call as YPD which contains yeast, dextrone, peptone, dextrose etc. Then the yeast cells need not synthesize amino acids because they are already present in the medium. So, there is no point in ex expressing many of these genes which are actually involved in amino acid biosynthesis. So, there is something called a general amino acid control wherein when amino acids are already present in the medium transcription of all the genes involved in amino acid biosynthesis are shut off. This is called a general amino acid control. So, in such cases these uh, genes are transcribed at very very low level or very very basal level. But when you now shift these organisms to a medium which will lack many of these amino acids then the organism has no choice but to make its own amino acids and in such cases these genes involved in amino acid balances have to be turned on at very high levels and therefore you need a differential regulation. So, what are the conditions, what are the factors or cis-acting elements under which these promoters are transcribed at low level and how these promoters are transcribed at high level, this differential gene regulation how is it brought about. What has been shown in the case of such one such promoter in history is that this promoter actually contains two Tata boxes known as TC and TR. Now, TC stands for constitutive Tata box and TR stands for regulatory Tata box. Okay. Now, the downstream sequence that, the, that is the regulatory Tata box has a typical Tata sequence namely the TATIA sequence. So, there are two Tata sequences one is called TC and is called TR and the TR which is the regulatory Tata box actually resembles the actual Tata box sequence. Whereas, the upstream that is the one which is present till about 30 base pairs upstream is called as the constitutive Tata. This is actually an AT rich region of about 30 nucleotides that does not really resemble a typical Tata box sequence, but kind of resembles a Tata sequence. Now, what is very interesting is that when the yeast cells do not have to make amino acids and when the history gene need not be transcribed to very levels, this particular Tata box is used, namely the TC is used when transcription when this gene has to be transcribed to very low levels. Whereas, the TR or the the regulatory Tata sequence is actually used when his G3 gene has to be transcribed at very high levels. This was these are the two original papers in which this particular study was carried out. But simply telling I gave this example just to tell you that how by using two different Tata sequences in the same promoter differential gene regulation can be brought about. So, you can see all these core promoter sequences they are not just there sitting there to assemble RNA polymerase variations in the number and their sequences minor variation sequences itself can contribute to differential gene regulation. <coughs> the other example uh, for example, uh, which uh, I told you just the, 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 the case of SP1 which I told you in the previous slide there are also many upstream activators which actually function only when specific core promoter sequences are present. Okay. For example, Simon et al observed that in the case of human HSP 70 promoter the transcription of factor E1A which actually binds to many upstream sequences further uh, upstream of the core promoter sequences this E1A protein which is a transcription factor can bind and activate transcription only when the HSP 7 Tata sequence is present. Now, so you have a uh, HSP 70 promoter which has a Tata box. Okay. Now, you also have a binding site for a transcription factor called E1A. Okay. Now, the E1A will bind to the substream sequence and activate transcription only when you have the Tata sequence of the HSP promoter. Now, if you replace this Tata box HSP 70 promoter from related sequence present uh, Tata sequence from the SV40 early promoter, now SV40 is actually a virus, it is a uh, eukaryotic virus which infects eukaryotic cells. So, they actually contain eukaryotic promoter like sequences and therefore, if you now take the Tata box, so you can see there is a difference. The HSP70 Tata box is TATAA whereas, the SV40 early promoter Tata box is TATTAT. Both of them are Tata box, they bind to TF2D and so on and so forth, they are involved in transcription. But if you replace this sequence in the HSP promoter with this sequence, the E1A protein can no longer activate transcription. So, very clearly telling you that these core promoter elements not, are not just sitting there to assemble RNA polymerase in and around trans uh, trans start site, but they also function in conjunction with many upstream activators and certain Tata sequences are actually required for the function of certain upstream activators which bind to far upstream sequences. Therefore, specific Tata box sequence of the HSP promoter is important for transcription activation by the even a transcription factor. So, you can see variations core promoter sequence actually determine which kind of transcription factors binding upstream can either activate or repress transcription. There is one more example in the human myoglobin enhancer for example, the <coughs> it can activate transcription only from myoglobin promoter, but not SV40 promoter. Now, 
as uh, as we discuss more on four, uh, it will become more. These examples will become more clear because, as I told you, regulation in gene expression consists of a number of promoter elements, and what we are discussing right now is only about a very small aspect, namely what is happening in around the transcription start side. We are only talking about plus 30 to minus 30 region in around the promoter, but there are many other sequences and many other protein factors which bind further upstream and they contribute. But what I am now trying to tell you is that for these protein factors and upstream sequences to bind and activate transcript from these distal elements, only certain co promoter sequences have to be present. So, there is a link between what is happening in and around the promoter region and what is happening further upstream. So, when the SV40 early promoters Tata sequence was replaced by myoglobin Tata sequence, the resulting promoter was activated by the myoglobin enhancer. Again clearly saying that variations in Tata sequences determine what kind of uh, sequences can function as enhancer sequences which are present further upstream. So, the myoglobin enhancers function specifically with the TATAA sequence, but not with the TATTAT sequence. So, so you, this is all very important for you to understand because when I said Tata box, you assume that all Tata box have only one job. Their job is to uh, bind to TF2D and initiate transcription. But what I am telling you now is that there are variations in the Tata sequences and these variations in the Tata sequences are very, very important for the activity of many other protein factors which are actually present in further upstream. That means, there are interactions taking place between proteins which are binding to the upstream enhancer sequences and these general transcription factors which are binding to specific Tata sequences and to specific Tata sequences there are specific general transcription factors are binding and what kind of Tata sequence are present actually determine whether a sequence further upstream can actually function as an enhancer sequence or not. So, in this particular case in the myoglobin enhancer this for uh, distal uh, upstream sequence namely an enhancer sequence can actually activate transcription only when this Tata sequence is present, but if you replace this Tata sequence with this Tata sequence, it can no longer function as a uh, enhancer sequence. Similarly, in the case of Drosophila, enhancers known as AE1 and IAB5 do not bother about all this terminology, just they are all different names are given to identify or dis, uh, uh, study different enhancer sequences, whose which actually serve as binding sites for many other transcription factors, which bind further away from the promoter sequences. And these two enhancer sequence, they preferentially activate transcription Tata containing promoters rather than Tata less promoters. So, you can see these, these enhancer sequence can function as enhancer sequences only from Tata promoters which contain Tata box, but when you now remove the Tata box, they no, no longer function as an enhancer sequence. So, the enhancer function of these sequences is dependent on the presence of a Tata sequence in the core promoter. So, there is a link between core promoter sequences and distal promoter sequences and function of many of the other promoter sequences which are further upstream from the transcom start side, they are actually dependent on the core promoter sequences. Similarly, another example, a transcription factor known as GAL VP16 has a strong preference for Tata containing promoters, whereas another trans activator GAL SP1 preferentially activate transcription from a initiator containing promoters. So, I am giving you all this example just to emphasize the fact that the core promoter sequences are not just sitting there to invite RNA polymerase to come and bind. They whether an initiator is present or the Tata box is present and this actually determines what kind of upstream activation sequences, what kind of other transcription factors can regulate transcription or not. So, when you have a Tata containing promoter, transcription factors like GAL VP16 preferentially activate, whereas when you have a initiator motive instead of Tata box, certain other transcription factors called SP1 can activate transcription much better. So, specific transcription factors which bind to further upstream sequences, they efficiently function in conjunction with specific core promoter elements. This is the uh, message I am want to give. So, I would like to summarize so far what I have told you. What the crux of what I have told you is that there are many different core promoter elements in eukaryotes. So, Joe do not just think that when somebody talks about transcriptionization in eukaryotes, it is not just the Tata sequence. There are many variations of Tata sequence. Tata box in fact is present only in a small subset of eukaryotic promoters. There are many promoters which are called as Tata less promoters. In such Tata less promoters, many other core promoter elements like the BRE, initiator, DRE and so on and so forth, they take over the function of Tata box. Okay. So, there are many different core promoter elements in eukaryotes. And Tata box is just one of them. There is nothing like a universal core promoter element in eukaryotes. So, do not assume that all the eukaryotic promoters contain only a Tata box, which is a not correct. Tata box in fact present only in a very small fraction of the eukaryotic promoters. There are many other 
variant core promoter elements actually are present in many other eukaryotic promoters. So, core promoters are essential not only for the assembly of RNA polymerase machinery and transcriptionization, but they are also necessary for the modulation of the function of other upstream cisacting elements or enhancers and transcription factors which bind to the enhancer sequences actually play a very important role only depending upon what kind of core promoter sequence are actually present. So, I gave you a number of examples which actually tell you that the kind of core promoter sequence what kind of Tata box sequence is present whether it is TATAT or TATTAT although both of them serve as a Tata box they and uh, to have a pre-initiation complex can be assembled there, but only certain Tata box sequences can are essential for the activation of certain transcription factors and when you replace by Tata box with a related Tata box from some other promoter these transcription factors can no longer activate transcription. So, the two important messages I want to give you in this uh, particular talk one is core promoter elements are diverse, there are many variants of core promoter sequences and the function of core promoter elements is not just to be involved in transcript initiation by RNA polymerase 2 and general transcription factors, they also plug, uh, play a very important role in, in general the overall activation of transcription. They, they, the variations in the core promoter sequences itself contribute to differential gene regulation. Okay. In addition, these different uh, vari variants of the core promoter elements in conjunction with protein factors which bind to upstream actually contribute to differential gene regulation in eukaryotes. Now, what I have given in the next 2 3 slides is actually the original research artic articles wherever I uh, talked about some of these things I have actually given you for example, I have mentioned you Baltimore's lab discovered this and uh, uh, TF 2 D was discovered by Goldberg and so on and so forth. So, all these references are actually listed here. So, whenever you want to learn more or learn more about some of these exp actual experiments which actually went to the discovery of some of these things, I suggest you go through some of these original research articles which are listed here. For example, the initiator motif, this is the uh, uh, original research article by Smallab and Baltimore which actually identified the initiator as a transcription control element. So, it is the first uh, report of a identification initiated from what element. Similarly, the discovery of Tata box was actually identified Goldberg, it is actually part of his PhD thesis. So, these references are arranged in the same order as I told you by discussion. So, whenever you want to learn more about many of the aspects which I discussed here, please refer to some of these original research articles, so that you can learn more about how we actually, what kind of experiments were actually done, what kind of model systems were actually used to study some of these. Uh, um, aspects which we discussed in this. Thing. So, I think close uh, now. So, the, of the two lectures we have completed so far now, what I have actually told you in the first lecture we took a, we actually understood a overview of how transcriptionization takes place in the eukaryotes. We discussed how a bunch of protein factors called uh, uh, TF 2 A to TF 2 H in combination with RNA polymerase 2 go and bind to the promoter region and help the RNA polymerase 2 actually come and bind and initiate transcription. And uh, we also briefly discussed how the RNA polymerase from a single uh, form of RNA polymerase in prokaryotes evolved to three different RNA polymerases and also I told you how a fourth RNA polymerase was discovered recently in plants. And in this lecture I actually told you that these sequences, the core promoter sequence to which the basal transcription factors go and actually bind, they are not just present there to uh, form a pre-initiation complex and initiate transcription, but there is a lot of diversity in the core promoter elements and diversity in these core promoter elements actually contributes to differential gene regulation. And more importantly, these core promoter sequences also determine what kind of transcription factors go and bind to upstream sequences and there is a talk or a cross talk between core promoter elements and the uh, uh, upstream activation sequences and protein factors binding to it and center certain transcription factors function only when specific core promoter sequences are actually present. So, what we will do in the next class is to actually talk little bit about diversity in the general transcription factors. Now, so far I told you how diversity in the cis acting elements in the core promoter diverse in the core promoter sequences actually contribute to gene regulation. Now, in the next class I am going to tell you how diversity in general transcription factors which bind to the core promoter elements also contribute to differential gene regulation. Do not assume that there is only one TF2D, do not assume that there is only one TBP, do not assume that there is only one Tata binding protein and there are variants of these general transcription factors and that also can contribute to differential gene regulation in eukaryotes. I think I will stop here. <coughs>